All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here uh, and giving me this opportunity. I'm, I'm seeing Prashant in a pajama kurta after a long, long time. So I don't know if that is a sign of uh, what this evening is going to reveal to us. Uh, uh, just, just briefly, I mean, he needs no introduction um, in an audience like this. Uh, just briefly to establish in front of you my connect with him. I met him uh, shortly before the uh, 2015 Bihar election when he had probably just begun to work for Nitish Kumar or was on his way to working for Nitish Kumar. Um, and um, as a journalist, I, I have kept in touch with him since um, because it's, it's our job to keep in, in touch with such people. He has not given me a shred of news in all of these years. But he forever exudes the potential of possessing it, which could be important, because he hangs around with big daddies, with Narendra Modi, with Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi, Nitish Kumar and Lalu Yadav. And these, you know, it should be apparent to you, these are very contrary um, characters, the contrary people. Who are you working for now? Frankly, <coughs> thank you. First, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. It's a great privilege to be among all of you who I'm working. After UP, I haven't taken any assignment as such, but I do mm, work with ISRCP, a commitment which I made much before UP to Jagan, Jagan Reddy. So that assignment is there. Other than that, I'm not working anywhere. Not for anyone. But we keep hearing that you are two-timing Modi and Congress. <laughs> Keeping in touch with both Modi and Amit Shah and Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi. Uh, are you denying it? Are you, are you not in touch with them? Are you, how do you do it? No, I don't know the word two timing. But yeah, meeting, if meeting is two timing or working, then of course I meet a lot of people. But make no mistake, meeting is not equivalent to working. And uh, because you want to keep it humorous, I'm not that big a person to deny an inv invitation from Mr. Gandhi or, or Mr. Modi or Amit Shah or whoever. And it's also because of the respect for the chair they hold. If they invite you, you have to go. Uh, naturally, when I'm sitting with them, we are not discussing. That's what I was about to ask. Why would you sit down with them? What, do, what would you talk with them? Uh, that you should ask them rather than me. Why do they ask me to come and meet? But naturally, we are talking politics. But again, I qualify again, uh, and repeat this, that meeting someone, talking to someone is not equivalent to working with them or for them. But is it not? sort of uh, a contradiction for you um, or a difficult thing for you to be in touch with absolute rank enemies on the political scene. You worked with Narendra Modi in 2014. Then you went to work with someone who had very bitterly broken with him in 2013, Nitish Kumar. Then you went on to working with uh, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi. I mean. Do you not have any ideological anchor yourself? Are you just a gun for hire? Yeah. This is something which I hear and read about myself and for all my group, that whether we are gun for hire. Let me tell you, we are not for hire. No one can hire IPEC because there is no financial finances involved which would incentivize us to, hire, to work for someone. The question about why you work with one person and then move to other is a different one. But definitely you cannot hire. Modi did not hire us. So as Nitis. Neither did Congress hire us. And out of three, two are apparently broke. So they can't hire us if you think. <laughs> so all, all the numbers which you read, 400 crores, 500 crores, I wish. Part of it would be true, if not for me, at least for my colleagues and many of ISB alumnus who would have worked with us. We have been constantly struggling to get the resources which they so much willing to spend, but they never do. 
Uh, on a serious note, yes, it has been a journey from Modi to Nitish to Congress, but it is not, money has been the last uh, criteria that would have made us move from one side to another. No, no, but give, give us a sense of what makes you make those moves from, from mm -hmm. one camp to the adversarial camp to a third adversarial camp. What's the motivation that takes you from one place to the other? And I'll come to why you moved from the first place anyhow in a bit. So first of all, you know, as young people, you need to understand they're not as adversarial as they look in the public. <laughs> so be careful. Uh, a lot of what you hear and courtesy colleagues of Sankar Sen, uh, <laughs> that they're fighting each other, they can't talk to each other, that's for public consumption. Having said so, see ours says the first campaign we did, we started in 2012 with Mr. Modi and it was more of an individual effort from my side when I left UN, came here to work on malnutrition, ended up doing what I do and trust you me, in my wildest of dream I would not have thought doing what I'm doing. In our family, like many of your families, if you talk about politics, people will say, Lagta hai, padhai likhai ka man chhoot gaya hai. Lagta hai, gaya. Politics karenge. But as it so happened, it was a gradual process. So I, I give a couple of examples, like if I used to write speeches in UN, the skill set remains the same, but you end up writing speeches for the leader. We used to uh, use a lot of statistics to gauge why people go for immunization or why they behave, why they don't hand wash or why do they breastfeed or they don't. The tools of the analysis remain same, the questions changed. Why do you vote? Why do you don't vote? Why do you want to vote for someone? So the basic tools remains and that probably what Mr. Modi would have seen and I must give credit to him because for all others who I have worked with later on had a reference of 2014 or uh, before it was the Mr. Modi who actually saw that this guy could be put to some use, some other use as well. Once we did 20, once I did 2013, then 2014 was a natural progression because he did one Gujarat and it was obvious that he will go for the India campaign and being part of his team that we were, we did. We expanded it and as I got more people, it in numbers increased from 2 to 5 to 10 to 12. There was this debate about ha need to have an administrative unit. So anyone who tells you that I had or for that matter anyone had a vision to start a CAG is lying to you. There was no vision as such that let's start an IPAC, let's start a CAG, let's become a political aid or campaign person. At that time we were just driven, most people who came to work with us were driven by their idea to come, become part of this election process and help Mr. Modi win. You'd be surprised in the first meeting when I had about 25 young people from best of colleges and professional uh, organizations who came, I asked them what should be the salary, what is the money which I need to provide to have you guys come and work. The average was 27,000. The people on their own, the average what we took was 27,000. So we started with 50,000 subsistence allowance. That is what CAG paid to everyone who chose to come and work with CAG for the Modi's campaign. So all this idea of hundreds of crores and profit, top line, bottom line is all what people like him report. It seems I am in the dock here. It's not <laughs> for some only reason. Me, <laughs> but you know, a lot of people write about it without uh, uh, being aware of anything what has actually happened. Post 2014, the biggest question has been that why did you leave Modi? Is it because Nitish paid a very hefty check? I tell you, he doesn't have any. <laughs> but, you know, 2014, there was an idea in our head that we, what we would be doing once he wins the election. And it was nothing to do with what media reports about 
me and Amit Shah, me getting a post or uh, someone writing a check. It was about an institution which we wanted to set up, uh, which would be a kind of extended arm of the PMO and be responsible for uh, decentralization of last mile service delivery. But more importantly, what was crucial there was opening up the government for the lateral entry. Because I genuinely believe that the last mile service in India, if ever has to change, these two things has to change, which is to decentralize. There is no way, no matter how efficient the government is, no matter how efficient the leader is, unless we decentralize, there is no way we can improve delivery on the ground. And second, I strongly believe that the best talent is not necessarily is going to government, at least in the last 10, 15, 20 years. So for that matter, governments have to create institutions, bodies, procedures, protocols to allow youngsters to come seamlessly, work with government and maybe go back. Something what we did in CAG or what we are doing on the political campaign side for, the, for your understanding and create, trying to create an equivalent of same for the governments, governance. And I can tell you on record, Mr. Modi was very, very receptive. Not only receptive, he was participant of that idea. He loved it. He wanted to do it. But maybe he was too new when he started. And uh, to be fair to him, maybe I was in hurry. I wanted it to happen in a matter of two months, three months, four months. And uh, he probably wanted to settle down. And obviously, as you would have seen recently, there is a small little uh, ad about 10 people, lateral entry of 10 people, and such a hue and cry. Imagine someone is telling him that create an institution where you can have thousands of people who can come and work and go back. So my sense was, and this is my assessment, that at that time, people who advised him in government would have told that it is too big a risk to take right at the very early stages of your government. So they scuttled it? I wouldn't say they scuttled it because when I met Mr. Modi even recently, he, he said the same thing that I was, we were new in the government and you were in hurry. And I have to take that my share of blame that I was in hurry because I wanted to happen for that to happen almost immediately. So sometime in, I think in, August of September of 2014, I told him and I realized that maybe he is not very comfortable taking this forward. So I have to figure it out my own way because I'm no longer part of the key priorities or the core team which he wants to have around him. Though at a personal level, I always shared a very warm relationship with him all through. Uh, so. In November, I met Nitish. Before that, I have never ever met Nitish in my life. Even though he comes from my state, I have never ever met Nitish before that. In November, I happened to meet him. He was not the chief minister because he resigned from his post. He went and he was just a leader of the party, which was recently demolished literally electorally by the Modi wave, as people call it. And we talked about it. And somewhere, the people who remained in CAG, we started having this doubt that, oh, did we actually know something or we were just riding a wave? So as many of you who have studied, uh, studied or have come from science background in theorem, mathematics theorem, we say, prove it both ways, then we write, hence proved. So we looked around and we say, if we do it other way around, it has to be Nitis. Because he has the right credentials as a leader, uh, but he has been lost, maybe for the want of an army of supporters, professionals, who probably could help him streamline his campaign. And then Bihar happened. I, I'll take two minutes to quickly sure. tell you why I would move from Bihar to Punjab and UP. Because that will settle the score to some of you who have an open mind, that it's not money or any criteria. but. The fact that in 2015, after the victory in Bihar, if you could recall those who follow politics, in 2015, BJP lost only two elections. One in Delhi, the vic victory was of AAP, and we won in uh, Mahagadbandan won in Bihar, which was November 2015. 
so there was this chatter that who is a better campaigner so up or um, ipac at that time cag was regrouped as ipac and the chatter that started on social media you know literally between their volunteers and our volunteers and it just we got sucked into it so congress did not approach uh, me or anyone it is we said okay at that time it was popular perception that aap is going to sweep punjab so we thought that if we can make congress with all their shortcomings which is being mentioned which people talk about if we can make them win against aap then we can say with surety that we, yes we know the art of campaigning that took us to punjab and to the proof of this is if you know the re, the elex there were five more elections that happened in 2016 april which included assam west bengal tamil nadu we did not work with congress there because we only were interested in settling this score with aap which is you can say it was like a bit childish but that's what took us to punjab not the money which captain would have give he doesn't have one i can again tell you on record at least before 10 years is out of power <laughs> and he's an old king so that took us to punjab now the only state or the campaign which we took out of these criteria was up and uh, that again is you can say you're young you get excited and there was this debate that which is the biggest political challenge if one has to take and invariably the answer was revive congress in up so i happened to meet rahul we had a long discussion he said to you can you do this and we spent 3 months 3 4 months between february 2016 until april and we thought and i still believe that we had a plan and we presented it to rahul and the congress leadership who because that time he was only the vice president and uh, they liked it they said we are all for it let's go for it but you know what happened in up we were humbled and that's the best thing that could have happened to us so after that we haven't taken any campaigns so i'm just telling you the journey and the rational or the thinking behind taking each of these campaign and none of this was because we do not believe in ideology or someone write wrote a check or we wanted to be positioning ourselves as anti modi or for modi it was just youthful exuberance you could say that you want to win one challenge then you feel okay i can do the second then you took the third till you put you till you are being put in your place then you get more realistic and in last two years everyone is writing i am going here i am going there i am going here i am going nowhere because i don't want to make the similar mistake of taking a challenge which i am not prepared to necessarily do just as an aside um, nitish doesn't have money rahul doesn't have money captain amrinder singh doesn't did, have money i did not i did not say about rahul <laughs> <laughs> neither did you say about modi but, but do not put your word in my mouth i said you did not say I, about I, modi I told, i told you who has got money i did not say who has got money i told you the two people who we worked with they were not necessarily money people uh, you know punjab congress you know amrinder singh i don't think i, I i'm very comfortable telling that he no they didn't have the resource to fight election what 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 went wrong with rahul gandhi what what went wrong in the ah uh, nothing no but why didn't it work i mean why didn't you stay and work the challenge was still there of as you said reviving the congress congress is not a up party or a punjab party there still is the challenge of reviving the congress across this country uh, and that challenge you seem to have abandoned yes because congress is not my party it is for the congress leadership to decide what they want to do with the party uh, after up yes i did take a deliberate call not to be involved if i am not able to execute because that's what we learned in up that you could have the best of the plans but if you are not able to execute it 
uh, then it is it can only lead to disaster and uh, since then we have been friends we have, I, I have no hesitation in accepting that we are friends mm, we meet we talk but uh, we have agreed to disagree that we need to be working together because he has his own views and rightly so he is the congress president elected congress president he has his own ideas he has his own vision he has his own plan that may or may not be something which i can i am convinced so what is the point in just joining hands if both of us we are not on the same page on the path forward and hence we we choose not to work at least not till until now but i wish him well and i think he is doing what congress is expecting him to do or is he his prime minister material who am i to say no you worked with him i mean come on Listen. Listen, you work with someone closely, build up a strategy, work with him on one election closely, on another tangentially in Punjab. You have to have some sense of whether he makes the grade or not, or does he have the potential to make the grade or not. One man that you worked with made it to prime ministership. Another that you worked with, why won't you tell us whether he has the grades to make it or not? Listen, uh, it's a piece. <laughs> is the people of this country who has to judge he has to prove to, to them it he doesn't have to come good to my assessment he has to come good to the assessment and the trust of the people of this country uh, i happen to be one now you are forcing me to say what i think well of I course i am i am i am i very much I am <laughs> then there is a reason why ballots are secret Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll take that. I'll take that. Do you do you think Priyanka would have made a better Congress president or a politician? You seem to. To the best of my understanding, she's not in public life, so it's not. She's fair. deeply involved in Congress affairs, though. I have worked closely with her in UP, but that too, she was in the background. Uh, she's not in active politics. and i am nobody to suggest whether she should be or it's her call and more importantly it's a call of the congress party you and i have to give to the wisdom and experience of the congress men and women it's a 100 year old party no matter whether they are down whether they are doing good or bad you have to leave it to their judgment to decide who they want as their leader we from outsider can can have our views but you know let's not just push it we get, get we got our answer here no but 60 you have your views but you can't push it 60 65 years they have ruled this country <laughs> so they have <laughs> and they have elected someone to be their Fair leader enough. he has just started i think we would be grossly unfair to him not to give him the chance and start speculating about a third person or second person who is not even in the politics so what's the point I'll ask you a uh, uh, slightly removed from politics question. What is it that you bring to politics that, or election, the conduct of elections that political parties traditionally have not brought? I mean, one sense was that Bihar was the victory of merely the votes of Lalu Yadav and Nitish Kumar and the Congress coming together, and so and so. Why does Prashant Kishore get so much credit for, um, you know? a juggernaut that had rolled bihar only months before it was stopped modi was the grab was prevented what is it that you do with in, with elections and politics that is new and that was not been done and that adds to the potential of political parties to do better than the competition you know first of all we have never claimed and i must be on record we never claim that we do x y or z we are just part of the process and we are we or for that matter any individual or a group of people who are who you attribute victory or loss is being overrated so by that definition people like me are hugely overrated we cannot change elections we cannot change election result 
This is what media tells you because it's convenient for them to write about it because there is someone, some individual, some group of people who you can attribute a lot of things which you want to attribute. We just woke up one morning and got enamored with Prashant Kishore. Sorry. Sir, I said we just woke up one morning and got enamored with Prashant Kishore and started writing about him. No, is that what you're I'm saying? saying that you see something but uh, it is easier to attribute things which are, you know, tangible, there are a number of people, they are doing some things, but to have a cause and effect relationship, that because of this you won. Now, I do, I hear and read about this, that was it the Gatbandan or quote unquote Prashant Kishore and his team? Was it the Modi wave or what did they do? We did nothing. At best we would have contributed on the margin. But you have to give one thing, that what does the young people who work with me, and more than 3,000 have worked in the last two, three years, and have come, worked, gone, and to do, pursue what they want to pursue, is they bring tremendous energy, they bring exuberance, they bring energy, they bring efficiency in whatever little work you do. I give an example. If you have to put posters on the doors of the households, someone coming from Amazon or Flipkart, will definitely do it better than, say, common worker. So that's what we bring. We bring probably more efficiency. We bring more order. We make, uh, we bring more system to what it, it, it is being done. But it is not something which has been invented or um, discovered by me or people like me. If you, any one of you would have followed election, of course you have followed many, just look at how an MP or MLA fights his election. During election time, they get the best of their people, their friends, their relatives, who are seen as good organizers. Someone is managing his office, someone is managing his schedule, someone is managing his speeches, someone is managing his finance, someone is managing his distribution of collaterals. That, is, that has been done for ages. What we have done is we probably has taken it to the scale. Bringing together hundreds or thousands of young people who are capable of doing such things and those politicians who require and possibly could benefit from service. This is not a rocket science. It's the same thing done with dedication and some degree of efficiency. So if you are looking at I do X which is unknown to the politician, I think you would be making full, full of, I would be making full of myself. There is no way I can bring any knowledge, any expertise, which is not known to the politician who has given his life fighting elections. How can I add value to that? I can just help him become more efficient, more organized, nothing more than that. If for that you want to attribute, but where is the interview, where is my quote or my people who say that I have or we have helped someone win election? It is for them to see. It is for media to write. Who, who is the politician you've been uh, most comfortable working with or, or you think you've, the relationship has been most productive? You worked with four or five major ones. So productive is a very subjective, nuanced word. Uh, but by large people who are in control of their affairs and the party, their party's affair, it's easy to work because once they are convinced what you are suggesting and if they like, they can get it implemented. If they themselves are not in control, then possibly you could have face challenges, but that's part of the game. Uh, who was the one not in control? Sorry? <laughs> So there are, uh, I, I know Shankar Sen, the being, being the journalist which he is, he's fishing for some name to make the headline. So there are leaders who are more in control and there are leaders who are less in control. It is also to do with the fact the culture of the parties are different. Uh, a BJP or a regional party or a Congress, you cannot put all on the same pedestal. It is far easier for a regional party leader to get things executed because he, it's more or less one man or four or five people who run the affairs. If you're dealing with a party like Congress, which is 100 year old, it has got its own history, culture, work pattern. It's not easy, no matter how strong a leader you are. So I do remember writing a piece before you 
began working with the Congress, that the Congress is far too huge a behemoth. It will take a lot of time to turn around and eventually eject you. Is that how you think things panned out? Not really. You know, in, in, I, I see in Punjab, one of the unfortunate things is that the Punjab elections were clubbed with UP, so no one talks about Punjab. The same Congress party with the same set of work culture, the same uh, uh, constraints, whatever people write often, uh, got their biggest victories post-independence. This was one of the biggest victories post-independence in Punjab. Captain Amrinder Singh, 77 year old leader. So what makes you think that it is Congress cannot win? They can win. So I wouldn't generalize and say it is very difficult to do it in Congress and very easy to do it in BJP. Both has got its own set of challenges. Sometimes we are able to navigate and sometimes we fail. The, the failure is because of me, not because of the Congress or the BJP. Have you come across a politician who you thought was underrated? Who had potential Politicians in your eyes? Politicians are always overrated. <laughs> Most of them. You haven't come across an underrated politician? I'm sure there are many, but by virtue of them being under, underrated, probably I didn't meet them or I didn't have much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't See, I told you, he hang hangs out only with the big daddies. <laughs> no, the fact is, if you are brilliant as a member of parliament and you're underrated, uh, it wouldn't, uh, probably I wouldn't have had an opportunity and that's my misfortune that I didn't meet that underrated leader. But whoever we meet, they're all brilliant. I, I, I tell this to my colleagues who come and meet us, who come to work with us, that most of the politicians, we think they're not smart, they are not articulate. They might not be as articulate as you and I. They might not be speaking the language which you and I do. They might not be using the tone and the tenor, but they are very, very wise and smart people. They understand many things which you and I will take years to learn. So do not, for all what we say about politicians, we, you know, do not underrate them. They are very, very some of the very high caliber people are there and many of them are well-meaning as well. And the proof of this is, look at the, and most of you here, many of you would say, okay, these politicians, but you look at the voting pattern in India, in the last 15, 20 years, for all the politician thrashing and bashing we do in our drawing rooms and the living rooms and the bedroom, we go and vote. And Few years back, when NOTA was introduced, a lot of people thought that NOTA will get a lot of votes. But in reality, it has become inconsequential as far as the election results are concerned. That means, you know, people say, who do I vote? They have no choice. But look who they are voting. People are not coming from Mars to vote. It's you and I who are voting. And we are not voting for NOTA. Though when Private, when we talk, we say, all of them are same, what's the point? I don't feel like voting for anyone, but you and I go and vote for someone. Democracy is not about, to the best of my understanding, democracy is not about finding the ideal. It's about finding the best among the available lot. If you keep waiting to find someone who is ideal, you're, I'm, I'm afraid you'll never get one. What is your sense of how uh, you work for the 2014 campaign? We are heading into the next one now. What's your sense of how Modi has done as Prime Minister? Frankly, uh, you promised a lot. You came on a huge high. What's your assessment of how the man you helped get elected as Prime Minister of this country has done? Every voter will have this question. I'm asking and you. And they will answer. And I will answer also as a voter. Depends on, on a serious note, it depends on the reference and the parameters on which you want to judge him. If your reference is the high expectation that he is going to change everything or everything in India is going to change in next two years or three years for better, you might find him someone who has not delivered as you, ex you or I expected. But if your reference is what was happening in last three years before he came or last five years or what we are normally used to, to get from our own governments, on certain parameters, he would have done better than expectation. On certain parameters, probably he would have done less than what 
was expected. But to have a blanket assessment whether he has done better or worse, I don't think I'm capable enough to do that. But each one of us, depending on your reference and what matters to you as a parameter on which you want to judge a leader or a government. For someone, economic parameter could be very high on the list. For someone, it could be tolerance, religious harmony, all those things. And their answers would be different. Both of them would get a different answer. So that's what I the, think. Uh, the socio-political temper of the country doesn't worry you at the moment? No, I'm not worried, to be very honest. As a citizen, I'm not worried about the what some people write. Uh, this country is too big, to my in my opinion, it's too big, too diverse, too strong to be rattled <coughs> by some elements with which you and I may, may or may not be comfortable with. We must have the faith in our own wisdom and the cumulative wisdom of 1.2 billion people. No one individual or institution or a group of people can destroy it in a hurry. It's not possible. What is your current relationship with the Prime Minister and his party president? Sorry? What is, your, what is your current relationship with the Prime Minister and his party president? I believe you meet, him, meet both of them very often. These meetings have increased in the past few months in terms of frequency. So, I haven't met or talked to the Prime Minister after I formally left his office in, to the best of my recall, it was March 2015. That's a lie. I'm telling you. I'm coming to it. Oh. Between 15th of March 2015 till uh, last year when I lost my mother, she was in ICU, so Prime Minister, he called, he was kind enough to call. In between, for all the speculation, there has been no connect either from his in side between. or from my side. In between, I was not in touch with him. Fair enough. So the conversation or the reconnect happened when my mother was almost on her deathbed. He called and since then we have been talking. I have met him many times and that is it. Talking about what? I told you at the beginning, if I am sitting with the Prime Minister, he is a political leader. He, he, he it is will a busy be about man the government well. schemes, it will be about uh, who, whatever. He is the boss, I am nobody. Whatever he chooses to speak, I have to respond to it. So, if he, if, he, if he asks me, if he asks me, what do you think of Ujwala? I will tell what I think of Ujwala. Has he mentioned the word Gharvapsi? No, not, not, not to me. I'm asking, it's a fair question, since you're here. He, in his opinion, I, I was... Uh, I, I was entitled to do what I did. If I ever choose to come back, he's more than welcoming. And I'm grateful to him for that, to have that view. But specifically, we are not discussing about whether you are coming back or going out. He's too big a person. With the Prime Minister, you don't discuss coming back or going out. <laughs> you. Uh, what do you discuss with him is what we want to know. And you are taking us round and round in circles. You, you ask people, do I am, I, I, am I taking you round in circles? I'm well, I say, let's take a word on this one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so why don't why don't you break and then ask, and I, I'll try my. No, it's a simple my question. To answer what it's he, a he will, sim he, he, he is, like any political leader would talk about politics, what I think, what I hear, what the situation like. Mm, what are the government schemes that people are happy about? What are the schemes that could be done? What could be bettered? Whether what he hears, probably he would like to hear from me, my opinion about the general conversation that happens in the country about in and around political affairs. And that's a lot of topic to talk. No garwapsi. Sorry? <laughs> We can't go anything beyond that. I have given you, uh, I have tried to give and you. And with Mr. Amit Shah? 
He's the same. He, he's not the prime minister. He, he, governance is not his concern. His concern is the party, elections. But these are linked. Governance and sure, elections yes, are sure. not separated. Elections will be fought based on governance, their record, what they promise, what they've delivered, how people see it. And uh, I personally do not, have not found much difference between the line of discussion or the questioning or the queries that come from one or the other. It's almost the same. Maybe when Prime Minister is speaking, he would be speaking more on the government side about the schemes. And when Amit Shah is speaking, maybe he would be speaking more about the party. But net net, it's same. On the basis of what you said this evening, if I were to ask you what you tell them, you will say it's privileged, right? Sorry, come again. If I were to ask you what you tell them. I tell them with whatever little understanding I have, which is not much compared to them. Uh, you know, they are in politics for the number of years which is my age, equivalent to my age. So what can I tell them which they don't know? And they have a huge army of people, party, uh, people who can bring scientific information, assessments. So what someone like me can add, maybe whatever I say, whatever I know and I say, choose to talk to them, they use it for the triangulation of some of the information which they would already have. have. I don't think I'm bringing something new to new. them which is unknown or not understood sure. by them. I, I think I would be naive to believe that. I think they're running out of time here. I have two last questions. What has taken you so long to come out and speak in public with a journalist on record? Um, because I frankly, for all these years, even when ISB guys approached us, I told, and you can check with them, that I don't think I have enough to talk. I don't think I have done anything significant to come and talk or to lecture about. I am as small a student as you are. If any one of you go and choose to do what I'm doing, probably many of you would be better than what, I, what I'm able to do. So I never felt the need to come out and say things as if I have learned. I, if any one of you would have followed, I even tried, someone persuaded a friend of mine to write a book. And when we went through some of it, I realized that I have got not much to tell. Because if I write what I have been through, then it becomes tell all kind of masala, gossip. There's nothing valuable which I could write as my understanding or part of wisdom which I want to share, which could be productively be used by others. Uh, how a campaign was thought or what one does, how, what is the daily routine. If I write, choose to write about that, it's not something that will stay for long. And that's why I dropped the idea of writing a book. So that is one of the reasons why I have never choose to speak on any platform. Journalists, I'm still not convinced that I, I would be con talking to journalists on record, but uh, going to... You are talking to one on record right now. No, but I am talking to the well, it's all colleagues going on in record. ISB where journalists happen to, <laughs> journalists happen to be a moderator. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking to Shankarson, the journalist from Tele Telegraph. I'm talking to someone, the, the colleagues, the friends at ISB, and that's how I see it. It's uh, learning both way. I, I'm, and that's the reason I specifically requested them to keep it interactive because I want to hear from them. And One last question before we throw this open to the house. 2014 Modi, 15 Nitish, I knew this is Congress, coming. Congress, Congress, UP, Bihar, then two timing. Now, uh, uh, 2019, who are you batting for? I mean, it, it, the question is um, so obvious, but I wanted to, uh, this to be the last question. Who are you working for in 2019? Frankly, if you want to believe me, I really don't know. If it is two timing, three timing, I don't know what phrase you want to use it for. As but you said, we are journalists. Thing is, one thing is clear. I can be on record and say that. That for long, for last two years or so, I've been trying to 
get out of this domain and uh, most probably uh, and to people who work with me i have told that i will be quitting this post up only reason i did not do so is because up results did not go our way and for me it will it would not have been right to leave the organization at the time when the going were not necessarily good are you saying that you no longer prashant kishore is no longer available to political parties in their election I, back rooms I, i i can say that i can say that that in 2019 you would not see prashant kishore campaigning for anyone in the manner and form which in which i have been campaigning in 4 5 years but that's different from ipac and me uh, i as an individual would not be campaigning in the same way i have done in last 4 5 years and this is a call which i took almost 2 years back i didn't wanted to do it but because of up i had to stay put to make sure that ipac remains and i'm glad that ipac is where it is they are almost 20 times bigger than what they were in 2015 in terms of manpower they have got many more projects to choose from and work and more importantly they have right set of people who can better the work which they have done with me i'm sure they will do much better there is the right leadership there and they will take this forward and they will make it much bigger than what i could ever imagine for ipac but personally for me i want to leave this space for new people to come to do what they could do better than me and i'm sure they will and i want to do something which connects me to the grassroots we keeps takes me back to the grassroots i'm 41 and i want to spend another 10 years at least 10 years if not more this country is full of grass which part going, of the country going, is grass are you going to back to the grassroots which grass most likely i will go back to my own state which where the grass is much no, known and familiar to me so it could be either gujarat where i have worked and learned the tricks of the trade or could be bihar both place which is bihar where i go and i work there but you would not see me uh, campaigning in 2019 the way you saw before for good or bad are you saying you are joining politics did i say that anyone i'm asking that? i'm asking you 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 are saying you joining now, public now, life now now you know the story before you came to the it's point. already you, you how know specul- how the speculation goes on i will i will i will tell you why i am asking this but i will tell you why i am asking this because before we came, before we came here to us on social media it's been burning with prashant kishore to join politics and since that question has already been thrown up in the media space whatever you think of it uh, i am asking you are you join- those people have not asked you who are putting out those stories have not asked you i have an opportunity to ask you are you joining politics if you go by the what media says or what social media chatter is then i worked with modi mera ghar wapsi bhi ho gaya i have joined congress i have worked with every possible political party or leader which come which po- possibly you could think of so that much value for the what media has speculated couple of hours before because why did he choose to speak after 5 years there has to be a reason and that reason has to be okay now he's joining politics come on i chose to work because i like isb i admired isb i wanted to be part of isb <laughs> I, fif- 16 17 years before when i when isb was conceptualized when it was being put forth we as a student we looked and aspired to be part of isb uh and uh, because one other reason could be because i i do think that i'll not be doing campaign so i thought okay this is the right opportunity to come and speak in this right, right platform media just got added to it i i know some media friends are here and then delhi and bihar and whoever has r- written this that there has to be a reason he doesn't do anything without any reason if he is speaking there has to be a reason if he has met modi that means he has ghar wapsi has to happen if he has gone and met rahul that means now he has finally decided to be in anti modi camp now i have been reading hearing 
and living with this for last six years. But you have made through these three through these years, you have made exactly those transitions. So not not all of it has been false. You have moved from Modi to Nitish to the Congress. Yeah, but that was not. To Modi. I I told you why I moved, and yeah, that, fair was, enough. that was not something what media guessed. And I'm sure I can tell you that much that media will be wrong again. All I'm telling you that I want to go back and work with the people and at the grassroots rather than working with the leaders. I've worked enough with the leaders. I've worked, as you said, it, it was your word that I work only with big daddies and meet. I've had enough. So I want to go back to the grassroots and try to learn in a new way whatever I could do. And I, for me, it's the right opportunity because I can leave IPAC uh, in a safe hands. They will do very well and they are very safely placed for another two, three years at least, whatever I can see. Thank you, Prashant. It's a pleasure talking to you. I Thank you.